Hi everybody, Gary Coleshill here and you are in the right place. This is uh, a webinar, an educational webinar on social security planning. And we're very fortunate to have as our guest speaker today, Mr. Scott Rulon of Rulon Financial in Phoenix, Arizona. Scott is a licensed CPA and uh, he's going to tell us about how to plan so you can have a good retirement with social security and other stuff so without much further ado i'm gonna pass it over to scott so the floor is yours scott take it away thank you so much welcome everybody i know your time is valuable my name is scott rulon and i've been a cpa in the state of arizona as well as a financial advisor for over 35 years so there's very few iterations of retirement that i haven't seen although i did see a brand new one yesterday i came across the man who was from Leicestershire, Gary, believe it or not. And um, he's getting both a Canadian and a UK pension, as well as U US Social Security. So I got, I almost oh, wow. got dumped okay. yesterday. <laughs> he's a northerner. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. uh, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, so I've taken care of lots of people. So as I tell most of you, you retire once. I've retired hundreds of times. And so there's very few things we haven't seen, but today's program will help you learn more about Social Security so you can make the best decisions for you and your family. And you will hope, I know that you will benefit from our time together. So we are not affiliated with or endorsed by the US government. Um, information covers our current understanding and should not be considered legal or tax advice. Uh, please consult with an enrolled agent or CPA. Well, nice news is if you do have any tax questions at the end of this, feel free to ask. Um, having done taxes for over 35 years, I'd be I'd love to answer any questions you might have. Um, so no part of this presentation is intended to make an offer of sale or purchase of any specific product. So now that we have those good old disclaimers out of the way, let's talk about what, what Social Security is. Where does it fit in your retirement plan? Un let's understand your benefits and the options you have for claiming, its impact, the impact of work on benefits, and different claiming considerations regarding Medicare and taxes. So this is a typical pyramid that somebody looks at for retirement. Um, at the base of that pyramid is so social insurance, also so called social security. Um, savings and insurance after that, investments, and whatever type of legacy you want to leave. Your choice of when and how to file for benefits can have a significant impact on how much you're guaranteed to get. Um, it is lifelong income, and your spouse will receive throughout your retirement as well, whether they work or not. So Social Security is certainly a very unique asset in that it provides lifetime income. Um, it literally has a COLA adjustment, stands for cost of living adjustment every year. Sometimes it's a bit bigger than others. Um, your spouse will also get benefits as well. Your spouse, in fact, even if they never worked, when you apply for Social Security, can get up to 50% of the payment that you get. So that's a, that's a good deal. It's promised by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government, so that's a nice thing as well. So a little history of Social Security is signed into law by President Roosevelt on August 14, 1935, and is financed through a dedicated payroll tax. Um, if you've ever looked at your W-2 and seen that thing called Mr. FICA, and Mr. Medicare, not only are they withheld from your part, but your employer has to match it. Even if you are self-employed, they get to match it as well. And so just so you know, the first retirement benefit of $22.54 was issued on January 31st of 1940. In fact, the lady that received that, I think she lived something like another 35 years. So she paid almost nothing in and got a whole ton out. So today, Social Security is one of the largest government programs in the world. An estimated 
50 million Americans receive retirement benefits, and this includes 97% of our elderly population. As a result of increasing life expectancies and, you know, changing demographics, you know, really what we're saying, people living longer, um, you may see some changes in the future. So I know as I asked my 24-year-old son, one of the things he always asks is, will it be there for me? Well, I certainly hope so. So with currently, as the system stands today, with no legislative changes, Social Security should be able to pay full benefits through early 2034. After 2034, revenue should cover about 77% of future benefits. So where does Social Security fit in my retirement plan? Uh, most of you, if you walk into your kitchen or your utility room, you probably have that junk drawer. Um, we have one right up to the side of our kitchen. So I would say a lot of you have this thing called a financial junk drawer. You have Social Security, you might have employer pensions, 401ks, 403bs, 457s, annuities, earned income, cash value life insurance. So where does Social Security fit? Well, it was originally designed to pay 30 to 40 percent of your retirement income. It was never, ever designed to be on its own and just to live on Social Security. Um, you can certainly go to a site called socialsecurity.gov. It's ssa.gov. Um, that's one place where you can um, sign up for it. And so we're going to give you a typical example of someone who receives $2,000 a month. So they would receive, um, if we look to age 90 with a 2% increase, um, they would receive 288 monthly payments to age 90. Certainly if you're over 90, you still continue to receive. So you would receive from Social Security over $700,000 of benefits over the course of your lifetime. So how do we determine what a benefit is? Well, so the big thing is our earnings history. We pick the 35 years of average indexed monthly earnings. Um, you have to have at least four, 40 credits. 40 credits, so credit represents one quarter. So 40 credits is 10 years of work. And um, another factor is what age can we start taking it? which by the way is age 62 in case you want it to know. So social security statements. Um, I would highly recommend if you're not getting your statements in the mail, um, you go look online and see where you're at. So here's the big thing. Um, I always like to look at my earnings record. We actually one year found that my wife's earning record for a couple of years was, wasn't in there. So we actually had to petition social security and provide old earnings records so they could correct the record for her. So, and that's also a great place to look to see what you might receive in the future. So how do we reach that magic full retirement age, also called FRA? So if you were born between 43 and 54, your full retirement age is 66. Um, whereas if you were born after 1960 or later, yours is not till age 67. So as we go down the thing at different ages, um, you get different amounts. So if you chose to take it early, you can take it age 62, 63, 64, 65. And for those born after 1960 at 66. And so you can, um, at 62, you can receive about 75% of what your normal amount would be. And it grows about six or seven percent per year until you reach that full retirement age. So the other thing is if you choose to take it early, you're only allowed to make so much money in W-2 wages. Yeah, you can only earn about $16,875. If you earn more than that, they'll take away one dollar from your Social Security for every two dollars you earn over that. Um, you can also see if you are willing to take it at age 70, your retirement benefit almost doubles the amount that you would receive. So if you take it early, there's a certain amount of dollars. If you take it later, 
basically you're going to get bigger checks. And so sometimes it's just good to see if I started taking it earlier, you know, how long would it take for me to catch up with the later one? And every time we've looked at that, that's usually been about 11 years. So what if I continue to work? Well, earned income before your full retirement age is subject to what we call an earnings test. And your benefits will be reduced if your income re exceeds certain income thresholds. The good news is this earning test goes away when you repeat a reach FRA, which is usually for most of us age 66 and age 67. And any amounts withheld will be added back to your benefits after you reach full retirement age. So there's no single best age to claim. The three primary factors are earnings history, election age, and life expectancy. I mean, if you have a long life expectancy in your family and you're gonna to continue to work a little later into life, it's not necessarily gonna hurt you to take it later. But you should, for in most cases, I would tell most people to take it um, when they reach their full retirement age. Um, other factors are health, marital status, the desire to continue working, and to access other income if Social Security is delayed. So certainly you want to have other types of things that you can stack on top of that. So that includes things like annuities that might include cash value life insurance, might include investments and savings and 401ks. So there's several things you can look at. And so here's a little bit of a, we're gonna call a claiming summary. So if I begin before full retirement age, um, at, at age 62, or if you are a surviving spouse at age 60, your benefits are reduced. And um, at 60 or 62, you get about 75%. Um, you receive continued employment is subject to an earnings test. But after you reach that good old FRA, um, you receive full retirement benefits. And there is no earnings test. And then if you wait later, you get more money. And so after the full retirement age, you can receive about 8% more per year until age 70. So what I, how do I claim it if I'm single? Well, there's a picture of a social security card. And so your two basic options are to claim now or claim later. If you claim later, you generally receive more money. But what are the three types of single people that usually need to claim that? Well, you could claim a spousal, a divorced, or survivor benefit. So a spousal benefit, you can receive up to 50% of the working spouse's PIA. That's just the earnings test, no delayed credit. But you have to have been married at least one year, age 62 or older, and your working spouse must have filed for Social Security for you to get this. Um, if you are divorced, you can receive up to 50% of the ex-spouse's um, full retirement amount. Uh, as long as the marriage lasted 10 years or longer, you're age 62 or older, you're currently unmarried, and after two years, the ex-spouse filing requirement is eliminated. So spousal benefit, just going to give you a little bit of a case study here. Jackie is not eligible for retirement benefits based on her own work record. Steve's amount at his full retirement age is $2,400. Therefore, once Steve files for retirement with Social Security, Jackie could receive up to $1,200 of Steve's. So together, Social Security would pay you about $43,200 per year. So if Jackie were to claim before her full retirement age, her spousal benefits would be permanently reduced. For instance, if she applied for spousal benefits three years before her FRA, her benefit would be reduced to 37.5% of Steve's amount. Therefore, her spousal benefit would be $900. If Jackie files at her full retirement age, her spousal benefits would be $1,200, which is 50% of Steve's PIA. If Jackie filed until after her FRA to claim her spousal benefits, 
her spousal benefit would remain at $1,200. So here's the thing. It doesn't really, in this case, pay to wait um, because the benefit does not increase. So I would really, so if you're in that situation, I would apply as soon as I reach that full retirement age. So survivor benefits, what if your spouse died? Well, it's available to widows, widowers, and surviving ex-spouses. You had to have been married at least nine months, except in the case of an accident. You have to be 60 or older, currently widowed or remarried after age 60. And remarriage after age 60 does not impact eligibility for benefits. Well, that's a good thing. Um, so survivor benefits are 100% of the deceased spouse's benefit amount. So that's a good deal. So it's not just 50%. Um, reduced benefits can be taken at age 60 or age 50 if you're disabled. Um, it is subject to an earnings test if you get it early. And dual eligible widow or widowers can switch between worker and survivor benefits. So basically, that's a good time to make an appointment at Social Security and see which way you can get more money. So claiming considerations. As a general rule, you do not claim benefits early if you plan to keep working because they are subject to an earnings test. I think that's probably a pretty important thing to write down. So if you have a pen or pencil handy, um, do not claim benefits early if you plan to keep working. Now, spousal election decisions can have long-term impacts on the amount of benefits received. Well, that's, a, that's important to know too, especially if I were to take it early. So claiming considerations for married couples, they should coordinate their claiming strategies and plan in terms of joint life expectancy to get the most of benefits. So delaying the benefits of the higher earning spouse um, can help maximize both their retirement benefit and survivor benefit. Wow, that's mouthful. <laughs> so sometimes it's it's good to look at both of your situations at the same time. Um, the other thing you can do, you can always go down and schedule an appointment with the Social Security Administration. Um, I think it's good to schedule an appointment, by the way, because if you don't, you could be waiting there a long time. I've certainly sat in there a couple of times with my own mother uh, to make sure we had all this straight. But if you are receiving and you change your mind, you may be able to withdraw your Social Security claim and reapply at a future date. Well, this is a one-time thing and you cannot withdraw your application after 12 months. So after 12 months are over, you're done. Um, you are limited to one withdrawal per lifetime. And if you do choose to do that, all the money that you received before that, guess what? You have to pay it back. So Social Security taxation. So one of the questions that I always get um, in the tax preparation industry, is there a certain age where I no longer have to pay taxes? Well, there isn't. If you have a certain amount of income, you have to pay taxes. And other people want to know, well, is Social Security taxable? Um, sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. So if I'm a single taxpayer and I earn less than $25,000, generally my Social Security is not taxable. If I earn between twenty-five dollars and $34,000, 50% of my Social Security benefit is subject to tax. Not 50% tax, but 50% is subject to tax, just like your W-2. If I earn more than 34, 85% is subject to tax. Um, likewise, for joint filers, if we, you earn less than 32,000, no Social Security benefit is taxable. Between 32 and 44, 50% is subject to tax. And over 44, 85% is subject to tax. Um, here's maybe the other interesting thing is most states, by the way, do not tax Social Security. That is certainly true in the state of Arizona and many other states that I've done tax returns for. So that's a good thing to know. The percentage of your Social Security income that is subject to tax 
depends on the sources of other retirement income and the amount of your provisional income. The formula for provisional income is on the slide and includes income from wages, pension income, investment income, traditional IRA distributions, but it also includes exempt municipal bond income and one half of a person's social security benefits. The last two benefits are a surprise to many people because normally uh, municipal bond interest is not taxable. So this is the one place where municipal bond income can cause your social security to be taxable. So as your, what we call MAGI modified adjusted gross income increases above a certain threshold, you could be subject to having 85% of your social security subject to tax. So remember, here's the rules for provisional income, also called modified adjusted gross income or MAGI, one half of your social security, plus wages, pensions, investments, interest. QP stands for qualified plans and IRA stand IRA withdrawals, plus non-taxable municipal bond interest. And if you wanna get really technical here, also the permanent dividend and Alaska and certain um, income from the state of Puerto Rico is as well. So just to make that complete. Um, when you look at your, your Medicare card, um, you'll notice that Medicare Part B premiums will be automatically deducted from your Social Security benefit. That's important to know. Um, that amount changes each and every year. So just like you get a cost of living adjustment, you also get an adjustment to your Medicare Part B premiums. For those that, that you don't know, Medicare Part B is usually what pays for your doctors and your medications. Medicare Part A, which most people don't have to pay, is really for the hospitalization part. So most people will pay the standard premium amount, but if your income goes above a certain amount, your premiums can certainly be higher. So that is called IRMA. IRMA is not your friend. IRMA means they're going to charge you more in taxes. Now, if you just have a one-time event, um, you have the ability to file a Social Security Form 44 to let them know so that the next year your premiums can go down. Um, if you receive a pension, that is a pension um, from a non-covered government job where Social Security benefits were not withheld, um, the government pension offset reduces the amount of your spousal or survivor benefits by two thirds of the amount of your government pension. So that's one way. Another thing that we call it WEP, it's windfall elimination provision. It's a recalculation of your social security if you also have a pension from non-covered work where no social security taxes were paid. Pension benefits may be re may reduce social security um, by up to 50%. Whoops, went a little quick there. The impact of WAP starts to decrease if you have more than 20 years of service at a job where you paid Social Security. In fact, I believe after the 30th year, um, WAP actually goes away. So that's an important thing. Um, the other thing I need to know is where do I file for benefits? Well, I'm providing you here the number to call Social Security. Um, they will route you towards your local Social Security office if you want to look online. Uh, that good old www.ssa.gov. That's a good place to look at them. Or certainly schedule an appointment. And very important to schedule an appointment if you're going to go in there at your local Social Security office. So one of the things that we can do for you is provide a complimentary. That means for those of you that don't understand that, that means free. Um, it also means without cost custom analysis of when might be the best time for you to take your Social Security. So this is a, a report that we can do, and we are happy to provide it. So in conclusion, Social Security is literally today the foundation of a retirement income plan. Um, being that really only maybe three or four percent of you are actually covered by a real pension plan, 
Social Security is certainly the base of all retirement provisions. Understanding your options and making informed decisions so you can maximize your benefits, especially if you're married spouses, you definitely want to make sure that you can receive the most from that system. A great way to do that is either to get our report or just schedule an appointment with Social Security. It's really easy to do. And we are always happy to work with you to help you assess your personal situation. Thank you so much for attending today. So I think we probably covered pretty close to 90 to 95% of the ways to use Social Security, how you can get the most out of it. Um, those are all important things because it is an important element of any retirement plan. The other thing you should understand is it is only a piece of a retirement plan. If you, you need to have other income to go along with this, that can include things like annuities, cash value life insurance, investments, or simply just cash that you stowed away. So lots of different ways to plan for retirement. But tonight, we really just wanted you to see what does Social Security do? Where did it come from? How can I maximize my benefits? So I'm going to open it up here to some questions, Gary, since it's always tough for people to ask the first question, <laughs> I'm going to allow, allow you to ask him. Well, actually, I did get a question here from Miguel, who yes. uh, asked, are there certain, uh, is there a certain interest rate for late payments of taxes and does it vary on the amounts? Or there is other a, factors, of course. Yeah, so we're talking about income tax for those that didn't catch it. So uh, if you are late on paying your income tax, there's actually two things that happen. Um, there is a penalty. Um, so even if you're going to file a late tax return, you should always file an extension so you don't get hit with the late payment penalty. Um, if you don't pay enough in, there's an underpayment penalty. But I think what you're talking about there is the interest. Um, yes, there right. is an interest rate, and it's a little higher than it's been in the past. Um, that interest rate, by the way, is changed quarterly by the IRS. So really important to keep up with that on the IRS side, especially if you owe them some extra money. Um, very difficult, even if you file what's called an offer and compromise, to get out of the interest payments because literally the government considers them loaning you money. Um, penalties, we can sometimes get rid of those through different processes um, with tax planning and offers and compromise. Any other questions, Gary? Okay. Uh, none that I can see. Um, I think you, I think it's because you covered that extremely well. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very informative. Thank you very much, Scott. Now, I also want to mention that, of course, uh, we did say that we would raffle off two restaurant.com gift cards. So uh, maybe Scott can uh, ask a question and see who are the first people to answer it. Do you have any questions in mind, Scott? I do. And so this is going to be a competition question. Okay. Sounds so the name. first person in order that can write in um, SSA wins a free gift card. Well, that's pretty easy. Go Okay, everyone go ahead. So I that's... hope you got fast fingers. <laughs> <laughs> like really set go. Absolutely. So yeah, Gary and I realized okay. that time is valuable, especially at the, you know, in the middle of the work day. But um, it's important. Social Security is a base benefit. It's not always the most exciting thing to hear about but you sure you certainly should know what it does and how it works because it's really important for when you choose to retire absolutely and um, miguel was uh the winner there he came out first he was the fastest with ssa so uh, good job miguel and let's see we've got a couple of others there and what we'll do is well we will uh go through them in order and uh 
if if you're qualified you'll receive one actually also don't forget that at the end when we wrap here you the a very short survey is going to pop up in your browser if you could fill that out particularly you miguel because we want to send you uh, process that gift card for you uh it will it would give us all your contact information basically uh to get that process so if you could all fill out the questionnaire at the end when it comes up it's literally 10 questions and they're no brainers really you know verifiable email address for uh verifiable uh, cell phone number and verifiable us po postal address are the most important ones but there's some other stuff on there we want to get your opinion on what we've done today and your opinion on some other topics you might like, like us to talk on in the future so <laughs> that's about it really thank you very much to scott your expertise is always uh, mo much appreciated, Scott. Thank you. And for whoever's interested, I think tomorrow, yes, tomorrow, we have a webinar that we're doing. Um, we're using Scott's uh, uh, knowledge on the topic to do one on college funding. So if you have an interest on that, let us know, and we'll send you over an invite. Okay. Uh, we know a lot of you may have some grandkids are heading getting to be that age and college is expensive even state universities today gary cost about thirty two thousand dollars a year oh yeah i had two kids go through college but luckily i knew scott <laughs> he helped us out with grants and stuff and yeah some pretty good stuff that saved us a lot of money so anyway miguel you're interested good we'll see you there i'll send you over an invite at the end please make sure you fill those forms out at the end would appreciate it um yeah and uh, hope to see you all again soon thank you very much thank you it's uh goodbye from me and uh goodbye from him <laughs> thanks scott bye for now all right.